folks this is Rainer here from tradingwithrainer.com so a little rant from me alright because previously just like 10 minutes ago I was actually doing my video I completed it but unknowingly I didn't realize that my webcam was actually on so basically when I look at the video it was something like this with a big fat ass box down here and my face down here talking all the way so while I'm blabbering, blabbering away it covered half the freaking charts that you know I have no choice but to redo this video once again so well, let's not rant any further and dive straight to where I was previously. All right, so let's look at some charts immediately and let's roll. So, all right, the first thing I would like to talk, right, the first pair I'd like to talk is actually the Aussie New Zealand dollar, right? Reason being because I find that it's one of the trendiest pair at the moment. As we can see, you know, lower highs here and here and here and here. And the most recent price action we got was a range between the 1103 and the 1. 063 level so basically a downtrend followed by a consolidation in anticipation of further move lower all right so looking at it on the weekly chart we can see the price okay where i shorted blah 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 it's not important where i shorted out but rather why i shorted so looking at the daily chart right we can see that price made a strong bullish momentum to the upside all right within a matter of two weeks which is actually very fast very quick and pretty strong momentum if you ask me and but i still went short anyway so you must be pretty puzzled why i do that so let me explain to you using uh, my own analogy on why i went short right so just picture for a moment that this is a uh, an upward slope right and there's a big boulder down here and this is this is i'll say me right trying to push this big boulder towards the upside all right push it up and hopefully get towards my destination so what are some of the strategies would I use to push the boulder up one could be you know I would say the more conservative one a strategy would be push the boulder for 10 meters right followed by a 15 minutes rest right that sounds very plausible right and you know with just enough uh, enough time enough effort I would definitely definitely or say most probably get the boulder up towards the top however should I choose to be aggressive and say ah 10 meters that's for you know little I would say uh, little kids to do why not I want to push 50 meters instead right and same I'll rest 15 minutes so being more aggressive and trying to be more greedy and pushing 50 meters at once chances are one of two things will occur number one I'll feel tired more easily and I'll need to rest more and if I'm lucky enough chances are I'll still continue to push it up in my continued direction so chances are you know I'm lucky but I'll still manage to push it up in my continued direction and feeling more tired nonetheless second scenario what could happen is actually actually is that I, I got greedy and tried to push 50 meters and I overestimated myself so I got tired and after that I realized that the boulder started to get started to feel more heavier you know started to feel you know going against me and the gravitational force actually pushing me pushing me downwards and what would happen is that you know I couldn't contain the weight of the boulder and poof I start rolling down the slope so using this analogy between the 10 meters and the 50 meters I mean I'd like to explain the recent price action on the Aussie New Zealand so looking at this right this strong move upwards all right it's like pushing a boulder at 50 meters all right chances are price will you know can do one of two things you will consolidate a little here before breaking up higher towards the upside or price could simply just reverse back as quickly as it rallied so yep these are chances are one of the two likely scenario to occur and you know since i'm with the trend i'm shorting at the resistance level i feel that you know it was a good risk reward trade and i took the trade and also another thing to share with you you know looking at the uh, i'll say a price action perspective from both sides the buyers and the sellers sellers let's say for example you went long somewhere at the support level down here and you're looking to take some profits so where will you look to take i'll say chances are you look to take all your profits or at least half your profits at this swing high over here right because you know there's some strong resistance some sellers will come into the picture and you'd like to take some profits down here so the buyers for one will look to sell over here okay that's one another thing how about another another bunch of traders the sellers this time you want to sell where is the best price to sell you zoom out a little and you realize hey no, the resistance zone is somewhere around here, the 1063, 1, 103, and uh, this high over here, right? So within this area is the, I would say, the seller scam where they look to sell. So chances are, if you ask me where is the best price to sell, the seller will look to again sell at this high over here. So we have two strong opposing forces, although they are opposing in nature. However, we can both agree that they are both looking to sell at this 
key area over here. So that's what happened this week and thus I took my shot for this pair. So target wise I'm looking at least the first target down to this area over here it should price get there. So yep that's my analysis for the Aussie New Zealand dollar and and congrats for those who actually shot it as well because I did posted it on my Facebook discussion group. So next pair, Euro Pound. Let's see. Euro Pound weekly chart again price still bearish if you ask me. However, we have a very beautiful bullish engulfing this week. So I would say the some shots got squeezed, right? So basically I got taken out of my trading stock of my Euro Pound shot few weeks back so now I'm still looking to short and which price level will I look to short so let's look at the macro picture on the monthly chart you can see that price actually contained between the lows over here right here and the highs over here right okay it's a uh, it's a I'll say maybe a triangle or whatever you call it so nonetheless it's still ranging however we can both agree that this pair is actually at the lower end of the range right nonetheless uh, it's still bearish and here's the level I look to short so on a daily chart, I wouldn't be looking to short at this 79.80 level, right? But rather, I'll, I'll be waiting at this level instead, the 80.30 level over here. So should price, should price uh, come towards this level in the coming weeks? I'll look to short here with about a 50 pip stop loss. And first target will be this swing low over here. Because looking at the macro picture, right? I zoom out a little. Sorry, use the weekly chart. You can see on the weekly chart, I still anticipate that price will eventually come up here, test, and we test this swing low over here. So yep, that's my anticipation. I could be wrong, you know, price could just blast through the area where I'm looking to short then I'll stop shorting this pair entirely. But nonetheless, I would say the eighty thirty level, I would say in army terms they'll call it the last line of defense, the eighty thirty level, whereby I will still look to short. If price breaches that level, I'll stop shorting this pair, at least for the intermediate term. Right? That's for the Euro pound. And last but not least, let's look at the dollar Canadian. Interesting pair. Look at the monthly chart. What do you see? Okay, I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, needless to say, we have a bullish engulfing at support level. So, with this price action formation, we can actually anticipate higher prices in the coming weeks or months. So, price definitely closed bullishly for the month of July. And looking at the weekly chart, you can see again the ebb, of, ebb and flow of price action, you know, price heading higher, right? And the strong retracement here seems to have ended and with price now pushing back up and wanting to test this swing high over here so not sure if it happened but let's watch and see and look at the daily chart for you guys who are just wanting to long right now just do know where you're longing into because there's some resistance coming up here at the 195 level so if you want to long do know that you will uh, be challenging this resistance over here so I would suggest waiting for pullback you know maybe a little bit of pullback before getting long again so you'll be wondering where's the pullback Rainer Right, definitely you can't see the pullback on the daily chart because it's uh it's too it's too wide. So if you're on a pullback, if you look at a one hour chart, and I would suggest you know you can plot uh, this level over here where you notice that price tested three times, one time, two time, three time, and if it does come back for a fourth time, I'm not sure whether you still on a long because you know that level is a pretty obvious level. Chances are it, price will just I mean blast through it or and fake out those bulls. That's one option. So I'd rather just take a step back. Watch how price react the level before deciding whether you're on a long at this support level on the one hour chart. And it's also not wrong if you choose to give this trade a miss because you know you want to be trading something that you're comfortable with, not not because you want to force a trade and you know just to show that you know you did something for the week. That's a uh, that's I would say ridiculous if you ask me. So yep, that's all I have for you guys this week. Because if you do enjoy what I what I talk about each week on my forex analysis, you can head down to my website, tradingfreener.com. I post up free articles and I do update it pretty regularly. And there's a Facebook discussion group over here where I mention, you know, there are traders like Go Kangwei posting pretty regularly as well and I really appreciate all that is done. And as well as the setup I mentioned earlier that I said, yep, Aussie New Zealand recent recent run up. Yeah, but it mentioned, see. So definitely something that, you know, a good place where you guys can actually share ideas together and improve as a whole. So with that, I wish you good luck and good trading. Thank you guys.